Thank you, Judy. That was beautiful. Well, happy Mother's Day, everybody. Uh, it is Mother's Day. We're celebrating that today with our worship service. And uh, we're so glad that you're able to join with us online. We got bumped out of the uh, Rose Garden again this week due to weather. So we're doing this only online this week. Hopefully, next week, we'll be back to great weather and uh, meeting back in our usual place outside. We will be worshiping at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings in the Rose Garden during the month of May. So uh, everybody be apprised of that. Now, once again, if our temperature dips below 60 degrees, or if we have any kind of precipitation happening, or if it's very windy, then we have to of course, um, cancel that and worship only online. So just wanted you to know that in that event, when we have to worship online, the service will be on our website by 6 o'clock on Sundays. So just wanted to let you know that that's happening. As I let you know last week, our church is struggling financially right now. Uh, we're pretty far behind where we need to be. Uh, we're struggling, folks, and uh, so I'm asking if there's something that you can do to help with that. Um, your financial contributions can be made by either mailing in your check or uh, you can donate online at our website at WestminsterUnitedMethodistChurch.org, and that's all one word, no spaces, and then <clears throat> you'll find the the thing there that says, if you want to make a contribution, click here. So you can do that. Um, or, uh, you know, of course, come in person to our Rose Garden worship services, and uh, you can uh, give at that time as well. All right. But anyway, it is Mother's Day, and we're excited about that. We're excited to be honoring moms. Uh, we are fully aware that not all moms are the model moms. Not everybody grew up in a, in a household where there was, you know, just love overflowing everywhere and that kind of thing. And we're aware of that. So to some people, honoring their mother is a painful thing on this day. But um, we, we just want to honor uh, mothers, women, um, and, you know, sometimes we call it All Daughters Day. Uh, we, we've done that as well. But in the United Methodist Church, the other word for what we do today is called the Festival of the Christian Home, where we, um, of course, lift up the sanctity of the Christian home and uh, worship, I mean, celebrate that in our worship service. So um, we're doing all of that today. So uh, we invite you to join with us. To those of you who were terrific moms in your households, we thank you. For those of you who have growing edges um, and need to be kinder and more patient and more loving, um, we celebrate you and we uh, pray for you and want to help you grow in that regard as well. So happy Mother's Day, everybody. I hope your celebrations with your families are good ones. Hmm. There we go. All right. Our opening hymn is Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above. And of course, if you have your hymnal at home, which I realize most of you don't, it's on page 126. Still to God open. 
Did I skip that? Yeah. Oops. Apparently I skipped the call to celebration. So sorry, but where would I be without Judy keeping me on track? And where would I be without Mary, Mary Beth helping me sing? Because those high notes, I can't do them, folks. So anyway, we backed up just a little bit. Will you please join with me in the call to celebration? See what love has been given to us, that we should be called children of God. By this we know love, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and lived and died, that God's love might be made plain among us. Therefore, beloved, let us not love in word or in speech, but in deed and in truth. Because we love one another, we know that we have passed from death into life. This is the victory that overcomes the world through Jesus Christ. Amen. And will you join with me in our community prayer? On this day of celebrating your love, O oh God, we lift to you those who have given us life, those who have loved us, those who have blessed us, and those who have taught us our mothers. May your blessing pour out upon the woman who gave us birth and those beautiful, strong women of faith who have been mothers to us along our journey. We lift to you, O oh God, a mother's heart, and although we cannot fully express our gratitude, help each one of us to be your blessing of love, a blessing straight from your heart. Amen. As we go to our time of prayer this morning, there are a couple of people in our congregation who have had some medical procedures and tests done. And while I am not able to lift them up by name because they don't want that kind of attention, I guess, <laughs> um, we do want to pray for them. God knows who they are, and so we want to lift them up. Um, we also want to be in prayer for those who are hurting during this time of COVID. Um, those who need your prayers for one thing or another related to that. We want to lift up all of the medical personnel and those persons who have done so much to keep us going and to keep us healthy during this time. So I would ask that you take a moment and pray for those that you are aware that need your prayers as together now we silently pray. Eternal God, we're so grateful to say good morning to you and to be in your presence in worship whether it's online or however we worship. But in these moments of quiet, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for all of those who claim your name and say that you are their Lord. We especially thank you this day for the Holy One, Jesus. We thank you for his humility we thank you that rather than elevating himself above us, he instead would lift us up and, as with his disciples, call us friends. We thank you for his many reminders that we are to love one another, but we confess that we have great difficulty following his command to love. 
We become upset with others and we find it easier to reject them than to seek to understand and to love them. We struggle with the almost impossible command to love our enemies. We become driven to meet our own needs and we become blind to the needs of others. We're driven to succeed, which becomes all-consuming and outshines our command to love. Forgive us for our foolish ways. Help us to keep in our awareness this command to love, which Jesus repeated so many times. Help us especially to hear it in those hard times when it's most difficult to love. Help us to love others as they are power hungry. Help us to love others when they are inconsiderate. Help us to love others when they are angry and lash out blindly. Help us to love others when they are selfish and insensitive. And today, Lord, we are grateful for mothers. We know that not all persons had good mothers and Many have sad or tragic or negative experiences with their mothers. We ask that you help them to learn to forgive. Help them to look to other women who can be mother figures in their lives. And we thank you for the love of our mothers and their touch upon our lives. May we honor them today with love in our hearts and love on our lips. Help us, O oh God to love everyone so that we can abide in your love and act like the friends of Jesus that you created us to be. And may we remember to pray as Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we look at the gifts that you have given to the church and that you bring to the church, we want to say thank you for all of your caring thoughts and your actions in remembering us through your gifts. So we want to dedicate those gifts at this time, and I would ask you to join me in this prayer. Thank you, God, for the signs and wonders that reveal your presence. We want to do our part to share your love with the world. Use our offerings and our lives to bring a realization of your reign among us. May we be humble, teachable, and faithful as we seek to lead others into covenant community. Amen. Our hymn is Where Charity and Love Prevail. scripture for today is taken from the gospel according to Luke chapter 2 verses 
41 through 52. Listen for the word of God. Now every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey, and then they started to look for him among the relatives and friends. When they didn't find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. And Jesus said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. And then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There are some days that cause preachers all sorts of trouble because of a high expectation surrounding the day. So if you take, for instance, Mother's Day, Reverend Robert Fulgham writes about it this way. For 25 years of my life, the second Sunday in May was trouble. Being the minister of a church, I was obliged in some way to address the subject of Mother's Day. It could not be avoided. I tried, mind you, but the congregation was quite open-minded, actually, and gave me free reign in the pulpit. But when it came to the second Sunday in May, the expectations were summarized, the words by the words of one of the more outspoken women in the church. She said, I'm bringing my mother to church on Mother's Day. Reverend, you can talk about anything you want, but it had better include mother, and it had better be good. Well, mothers are amazing people. I know because I had one, and she was wonderful. Do you remember Paul Reiser, who starred in the television sitcom Mad About You with Helen Hunt? Well, he wrote a book entitled Couplehood back in 1994, and he said this. I saw a kid who had some dried up food on his face, and his mother took out a tissue and she spat on the tissue and then rubbed it on the kid's face. I'm not making this up. And this goes on in communities around our country on a daily basis. It's enough to break your heart. You know that if babies could talk, the first thing they'd bring up would be, hey, don't do that. It's revolting. 
Would you like it if someone did that to you? Okay then. And then he goes on to say, it's disgusting, but it sure does work, doesn't it? There's something in mother saliva that cleans like nobody's business. All women, once they give birth, their enzymes change, and saliva becomes like Ajax. It'll clean anything. A baby's face, a countertop, a Buick. And if you get enough mothers together, you could do a whole car in 20 to 30 minutes. And the best part of it is, it doesn't have to be your mother. I go up to total strangers and say, Miss, do you have kids? You do? Good. Could you spit on this? Because I can't get it out. <laughs> well, it's Mother's Day. And I don't want to put a damper on the day for you, but you do need to face some facts. You, you mothers get one day a year dedicated to you and to you alone. Egg salad gets a whole week of celebration, as do pickles and pancakes, split pea soup, clowns, carpenter ants, and aardvarks. Peanut butter gets a whole month, which is March. Chickens get a whole month. September, and even oatmeal gets a whole month, January. But mothers and fathers get one day. And did you know that mothers have a protective streak in them? I have one. I call it my mother bear who lives inside of me, because if anything threatens my kids, even now when they're fully grown adults, I can come run into the rescue and I lose all sense of graciousness in the situation. If I had to guess, I would guess that Mary, the mother of Jesus, felt the same way. I would guess that while Joseph was out in the shop doing his woodworking thing, that Mary was in the house in charge of shopping and cooking and cleaning and laundry and social engagements and sewing and mending, caring for all the children and a hundred other everyday tasks. Mary and Joseph were in the habit of traveling to Jerusalem every year for the feast of, feast of the Passover. You know, this was really a big deal a significant religious pilgrimage and a very special opportunity. It turned out to be especially memorable on the year that Jesus was 12 years old. So the whole family went. They made their trek down from Nazareth for the festival. Now my guess is that it would have been a wonderful time part religious experience, maybe part vacation for them. And they would do all of the tourist stuff. They would go to the temple. They would go to the tomb of David, maybe Solomon's stables. And then on the way home, I would imagine Mary's mind was focused on all the stuff that awaited her when she gets home. There's going to be a mound of laundry that's going to have to be done. And then she would have to go shopping for food and dust probably collected an inch deep all over the furniture. And then of course it was always the children. Oh, wait a minute. The children. Where's Jesus? You know, now they're a day's journey away from Jerusalem on the way back home to Nazareth, and Jesus can't be found anywhere. They've looked among all of their traveling companions, and Jesus isn't there. So now the thought hits Mary, holy Moses, he's alone in Jerusalem. So they race back to Jerusalem as fast as they can go. 
Now think for just a moment. What must be going on in Mary's mind? She was frantic. Her oldest son is lost in this huge city. It's filled to capacity because of the religious holiday. And who knew what was happening to him or where he was? Every mother who has lost a child in the aisles of Walmart can relate to this. You all know that panic that sets in. So can you imagine what's going on in Mary's head? Think about it for just a minute. This was a woman to whom an angel had appeared. And when she gave birth, the child was visited by a choir of angels and by shepherds and by magi from the east. And she was told that he had been especially that she had been especially chosen to bear the Son of God. And now that child is missing. She lost God. Mothers aren't supposed to lose their kids. And she just lost the Son of the Most High. Well, I would imagine the mother bear in her was in full alarm mode. It took her and Joseph three days of searching to find Jesus. They looked high and low, and in every back alley, in every narrow street in the city. And finally, when there wasn't any place else to look, they thought they may as well check the temple. There he was, sitting among the religious scholars, the teachers, the authorities. He was asking questions and listening to their answers. He was soaking up as much knowledge of Jewish history and belief and practice as, as he possibly could. So when they found him, I would imagine Mary was steamed. The temple teachers were amazed at his maturity, but Mary was really hacked off. Eugene Peterson translates that verse like this. His parents were not impressed. They were upset and hurt. Yeah, for three days they've been beside themselves with anguish and helplessness and fear. For three days they'd searched and searched. For three days they wondered if they'd ever see their son again. And then they find him calmly sitting in the temple as if nothing happened. Well, to top it all off, he looks up and says, and this is a loose translation, why are you all bent out of shape? Didn't you know this is where I would be? Didn't you realize I would be here in my father's house? My guess is that Mary took Jesus by the ear and put him on the ox cart for the ride back home. I doubt they hardly spoke two words to each other on the way home because sometimes mothers just need a little time to stew just a little bit and calm down. And I'm still convinced that Mary knew Jesus was approaching manhood. I'm sure she knew that it wouldn't be too long before she'd have to say goodbye to him and set him free. And I'm sure that she redoubled her efforts to give him the foundation that he would need in order to make it on his own. Today is Mother's Day. And in the United Methodist Church, we also call it the Festival of the Christian Home. Today we acknowledge the importance of Christian families. There are some things that we just have to admit, even in our politically correct society. Families are important. A faithful family and a solid household is a place in which to nurture children until they're ready to be released into the world on their own terms. A family is the best place I know of to, to prepare a child for these adult responsibilities. 
And every one of us must make the transition from the homes of our mothers and fathers to the house of our Heavenly Father. And that's what Jesus is telling Mary that day in the temple. He was making that transition. And he was doing what he was prepared to do. He was moving on from the house of the earthly parents to the house of his Father in heaven. And that is the job of mothers and fathers in today's world, to prepare our sons and daughters to take their place in the family of God. The lessons we teach at home have to be designed to help them to learn, to, to, to mature, so that when they do leave home, they're ready to accept their full adult responsibilities in the family of God. Mary didn't understand this at first, and yet she treasured it all in her heart. And I know of no better place for our children than in the hearts and thoughts and dreams of their parents. I would like to share with you some words from Khalil Gibran. He wrote this in The Prophet. He writes, a woman who held a babe against her bosom said, Speak to us of children. And he said, Your children are not your children. They come to you, but, the, but they're not from you. And though they are with you, yet they do not belong to you. You may give them your love and your thoughts, but they have their own thoughts. And you may house their bodies, but not their souls. You are the bows from which your children, as living arrows, are sent forth. The archer sees the mark on the path of the infinite, and, and he bends you with his might, and his arrows may go swift and far. And let your bending in the archer's hands be for gladness. For even as he loves the sparrow, and that arrow flies, so he loves the bow that is stable. As we raise our children and grandchildren in Christian homes, in order to send them out into the world to be God's servants, let us be like Mary. Let us trust God. Let us rear our children in an environment in which God can cause our souls to, to thrive. And let us prepare, prepare them faithfully for service in and to the family of God. Praise be to God. Amen. Our hymn is Happy the Home.
now will you join with me in the benediction. Go now and bear fruit for God, fruit that will last. As Christ has loved us, so let us love one another. May Jesus Christ reveal to you God's ways and call you his friends. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.